traditional supply chains tend to focus on questions of capacity. Basically, they focus on how much do I have in the supply chain? How much do I need? What is the demand and what is the expected demand? How much can I make? Can my throughput or my capacity meet my demand? And how much can I sell? For, instance, for example, although I may be able to make a thousand of them and there may be demand for 1,000, are we really going to be able to sell all of it? Um, not being able to, to align what I sell with what the demand is will result in an overcapacity. An inability to sell everything that you make can result in having too much product on hand. This is especially true if your demand forecast is different than what is actually demanded at the time of sale. Yet, most supply chains ignore variety in the system. So what is variety and how does it impact the supply chain? Variety is generally the different models or different types of products within a supply chain. Increasing the capacity of a supply chain limits the supply chain's ability to absorb variety unless the capacity is designed to absorb variety. Take, for instance, when General Motors increased capacity in the 80s and 90s to build more cars, their capacity was unable to address the fact that they had too many product lines. So as a result, they had too much variety for the capacity to absorb, and they ended up generally having more capacity than they needed, even though they did have a lot of variety in their supply chain. So increased customer variety also increases the complexity of the supply chain. For example, as we're going to see in a minute, when you increase the number of product lines in a supply chain, you multiply the complexity of the supply chain by that factor. So, for instance, if you increase the number of products in your supply chain by three, you've increased the complexity of your supply chain by a factor of three. Now, note that uh, Ashby's first law of systems is that only variety can absorb variety. In order to increase the ability of the supply chain to absorb variety, you must design the supply chain with increased variety in it. And this is the concept of principles of postponement, where we basically design flexibility in the supply chain so that the supply chain will be better able to absorb variety. So let's say that you have a company and we make strawberry pies and we're very good at making strawberry pies. We have a company that makes a pie pan, then the pie pan is sent to the company that makes a pie crust, then the company that makes the pie filling, and then it is provided to a store for retail sale. So now let's suppose that you're suddenly approached by a customer that wants two additional types of pie. As you can see here, without designing extra variety into the supply chain, we basically end up with three separate legs of the supply chain, where each leg, where each supply chain creates the pie pan and sends it to their own company to get pie filling put into it. So, as you can see here, just by increasing the number of products, we've basically increased the complexity of the supply chain by a factor of three because each element is only able to handle one type of product. Now, when we deal with principles of postponement, we deal with designing modularity into the supply chain so that a node within the supply chain system will be able to create enough product to handle more than one product line. For example, if we have three types of pie, we can make it so that we make one pie pan that will fit all three types of pies. Then we have one pie crust that's used in all the different types of pies. And then all we have to do is send the pie crust to the different locations to have the pie filling. Note that you can also feed the pie filling from diff three different locations into the pie crust if you want. For this example, I just made it like this so it's a little bit more simplified. But generally what we do is we increase the modularity so that various elements within the supply chain can handle more than one type of product. In this example, the pie pan and the pie crust, each location can create 
their specific element for all three types of pies. Within a supply chain, we have something similar in which we may postpone shipping a product until we know for sure what kind of product is needed at the end. Toyota is, has revolutionized this such that we, they have been able to become closer to just in time by having the basic elements of each car available at the end until the customer decides upon a final design. Dell does something similar. And this is something that is also used in what we call push-pull supply chains. So push-pull supply chain in general basically creates an instance where we push products to a certain point such that the customer will pull the product from a certain point that allows us to customize the part for a specific customer demand. So some things to consider when designing a supply chain to exploit principles of postponement. You should focus on the point in the supply chain that has the most flexibility available. In some cases, you may think that there's some place in the design that makes the most sense to make it modular, but that location may not have the capacity, it may not have the design capability to modularize their output for multiple product lines. Therefore, every product in a principles of postponement system must be designed to be manufactured in a modular fashion. And the supply chain must also be designed to be modular, such that you are able to increase the number of different products that a certain node within a supply chain will be able to adapt a product to before it's moved on to the next part of the supply chain. So in this regard, manufacturing should be designed for increased flexibility. There are many different lean tools that are used to decrease turnaround times within a system. This is also why lean supply chains focus on having very short lead times, because when you have short lead times, you have a faster turnaround time for each of your products if you design the flexibility into it. And also, don't forget the increased flexibility for logistics. What I've what I've commonly seen is they increase the number of products they put into the supply chain, but the logistics function, the ability to move parts within the supply chain isn't addressed, such that all of a sudden logistics becomes the constraint that slows down the entire supply chain. So keep this in mind when you decide to increase the variety within a supply chain. You must also be able to increase the ability to move products throughout the supply chain to take advantage of principles of postponement. I sincerely hope you liked this video. If you did like the video, please press like on the page. And if you like the series, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel. This way, this provides me more incentive to make more of these videos. And if there's something that needs more clarification, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Thank you once again.